What I just played was an exercise I wrote that will teach you one of the most important things to know when playing chords. It unlocks the way we see chords on the fretboard with a very simple trick that will change your playing. These shapes float wonderfully from one to the other and seeing the possibilities on the neck of the guitar is just amazing. This combines voice leading and inversions whilst learning the most common triad chord shapes all over the neck. And as we have learned in my Understanding Chords video 3 of the music theory series I'm doing, all major minor sus2 and sus4 chords are just made up of three unique notes. While we often learn to start on the root note of the chord, that's really not necessary. We can start our chord on any of those three notes. And this exercise happens on just the D, the G, and the B strings. We use these strings because all three shapes lie beautifully on these strings. The shapes are elegant and easy to play. And that's something we're always looking for when playing guitar. We've got three shapes to grab a major chord on these three strings. Let me explain it with the G chord. The first one we call the root position, like this, fret five, four, and three on the D, G, and B string. We call this one the root position because the lowest note of the chord is the root. G, G, B, D. One, or the root, the third, and the fifth. Oh, by the way, all the tabs and backing tracks are available at my Patreon page. The next shape we can use starts on fret nine on the D string, nine, seven, eight. This is also a G chord, but now we start on the third. This is called the first inversion. And the third shape we're gonna use for this exercise is played over here, fret 12, 12, and 12. And this one is called the second inversion because we start on the fifth, fifth, root, and third. So now we've got three ways to play a simple G major chord. And the great thing about this exercise, we're gonna use sus2 and sus 4s as well. We're playing C, A minor, D minor, G. A 1, 6, 2, 5 cadence in the key of C. But every time we loop the progression, we're playing the chords as different voicings, going one position higher up the neck. And we're going to use a technique called voice leading to decide which shape we're going to play next. What voice leading basically means is that we want to stay in the same region of notes when playing the next chord. The distance of the individual notes of the chords are moved as little as possible. So instead of playing C and G, where every single note is moved a fourth down, we play C and G. Same chords, but it sounds vastly different. So on the piano, this is common practice and learned from day one. But on guitar, it's a little different. We often end up learning block chords first, thinking of chords as fixed shapes. But when you've got the freedom to ditch those fixed shapes and see the possibilities of all the chords lying on the neck, that's truly a wonderful moment. So let's go to this exercise. We play C, A minor, D minor, G, but all the chords go through this pattern. One beat sus2, two beats major or minor, depending on the chord, and one beat sus4, and then we move to the next chord. So this is awesome. We start all the way at the bottom where we play the first chord, the C. So on the D, G, and B string, the first C shape we encounter is this one first inversion. So now we start at sus2. We can easily make this chord a sus2 by just removing our middle finger from the D string because that's the third and the third needs to be a second. So this is the first chord we play. Then we go to the C twice and then to C sus4 moving the fret one higher to three. So the first bar in total sounds like this. And we played C sus2, C major, and C sus4. The next chord we played in the progression was A minor, and we want to stay as close as possible to this shape, and uh, preferably have overlapping notes. But we don't start with A minor, we start with A sus2, which is this shape. And then to A minor, twice and then to A sus4. So the first two bars. Very 
very cool. The next chord, A minor, D minor. So let's first establish where the D minor chord can be found. So the D minor over here. First inversion, starting on the minor third. F, A, D. I love this voicing, a really sinister sound. Cool. So, um, but now we want to make it a sus2 at first. So we uh, drop the minor third one semitone lower to fret two. So two, two, and three. And now we move the fret two one semitone up to fret three. Twice D minor. And then to D sus4. And this is a cool shape. We're gonna move the D string all the way to fret five. Five, two, and three. D sus4. So what's cool about this is that the fact that a bunch of these shapes are the same for different chords. For instance, the A sus4 contains the same set of notes as the D sus2. And the D sus4 has the same set of notes as a G sus2. And we use this to very subtly walk our way up the neck. So cool. So this is a D sus4 chord. 5, 2, and 3. But when I play a root note G, it is G sus2. Very cool. So the G sus2 is the first beat. Then we move it up to G major. 5, 4, 3. So this is just the root position of G. And then G sus4. 5, 5, 3. Very awesome. And now, wonderful thing, we're going back to C. And we start on C sus2, and behold, this is the C sus2. So it's G sus4 and C sus2. 5, 5, 3. One time, and on two times, C. 5, 5, and 5. To C sus4. 5, 5, 6. So let me play this in total slowly for you guys. So this is where we ended. C sus4. 5, 5, 6. And now we change to A minor sus2. Well, A minor. But then we start at sus2. 7, 4, 5. So 7, 4, 5, one time. 7, 5, 5. Root position of A minor, by the way. Twice. And then to A sus4. 7, 7, 5. Now we move to D sus2, and again, the D sus2, of course, is the same as A sus4 again. Two. So this is the second inversion of D minor. So D minor, second inversion, starting on fret seven, on the D string, seven, seven, five, sus2. One time. And then two times D minor, 7, 7, 6. And then two sus4, 7, 7, 8. So this exercise also teaches you where the third of the chords lie. Which note you have to change to make it a sus2 or a sus4 voicing. So it's so awesome to play this stuff. And it really gets you thinking fast. D sus4, changing to, after the D was the G. So G sus2, same as D sus4, 7, 7, 8, to G major, 9, 7, 8, and then the pinky plays to 4, 10, 7, 8, so F, D, G, G sus4, and then we are back at C, starting at C sus2, which is the same as G sus4, awesome. 10, 7, 8. Two, uh, one time. Moving to C major. 10, 9, 8. Root position. Twice. 
and our pinky goes to C sus4, 10, 10, 8. Moving on to A minor, sus2 at first. So this is the first inversion of A minor, 9, 9, 10, starting on A sus2 of course, 9, 9, 10, 10, 9, 10, twice, 12, 9, 10. So let me start it from here, from the C, C sus2, to A minor, D, to G, to C, to A minor. to D minor, here we are now, um, D sus2 of course, so 12, 9, 10, to D minor, twice, D sus4, so it's 10, 9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 12, 10, and then resolving to G, G sus2, same as this one, 12, uh, 12, 12, 10, G major, 12, 12, 12, G sus4, 12, 12, 13, and then we go to C, and this one is the first shape as all the way at the bottom. So let me play it slowly one more time in total so you can clearly see my fingering. So if you learn this exercise and really think of the shapes instead of just remembering the positions, that will make a huge difference in your playing. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Tabs are available at my Patreon page. If you want to support me, you can do so over there. And also please like, share and or comment on this video and subscribe if you haven't done that already. And don't forget to hit the bell notification if you want to be notified by my videos. Have a wonderful day and see you next time with another video. Cheers. <laughs>